Hey guys, it's some tea coats and this is the part 3 of our Recycle of Your series. Now in this part, I will show you how to set up a server to store information that will be used when populating your applications. Now I'm also going to show you how to code a simple PHP script that will help you in pagination. Now if you haven't watched the initial videos in this series, I suggest you do, but if you have, then let's continue. So I'll be using WAMP server for this tutorial. Head over to Google, search for WAMP, download from their website. When you're done downloading, you install the WAMP server. Now after installing, simply run your WAMP. Now to be sure your WAMP is running, you will see the icon in your taskbar. And when you see the icon, it's going to be green, which means everything is up and running. You just click on the icon and choose put online. Now, this putting online doesn't mean you need internet connection. It just means you need to get connected to a Wi-Fi or a local area network. So for my case, I'm using uh, just a simple router, which is not connected to the internet. But it has an IP. Now to get the IP of your system, all you need to do is go to command prompt, type IP config. Now whatever you see as your IP version 4 address, that is your IP. So copy that and paste that in your browser. It should take you to the WAMP homepage or your local host. Head over to the install location of your WAMP. You're gonna see a folder named www. Inside the folder, you create a new folder, name it anything you want. The folder is going to be where we're going to store all the files we need for our server. And just to make sure everything is working, I'm going to quickly create a simple HTML page using Notepad. And then I'm going to navigate to that HTML file from my browser. And if it opens up, that means we're good. So that's it. So we're good to go. So I'll head back to Android Studio and create a new class to contain configurations for my applications. And the first one I want to put there is the URL where, for where the information is stored. So the URL now is going to be the IP address stroke the folder which we created. That should be our IP address. Now this was a website. It will be the name of your website or the domain name. So I'll have the IP address there, slash the name of the folder I created, which was product. Now the next step for me would be to set up my database, and I'm going to be using PHP my admin to do that. PHP my admin comes bundled with WAMP. So just go to localhost slash PHP my admin to get it started. So start off by creating a new database so choose a name and click on create after which you're going to create a table in the database so i'll choose a table name also and click on go now in my table i'll have columns the first one is id i want it to auto increment then i know i'm going to need one column to store the names of the product one column to store the price I think I also need one to store the type. So note the types for each columns I used. For the ID, I used int type because it contain integers. For the name column, I used long text because it contain text that are quite long. And uh, for others, I just use a type that will reflect what I'm going to store in it. So when you're done creating your columns, your types, and your lengths, just click on save. So after I've done that, I'll just go ahead and uh, put in some data into the database. So I go to insect, just, uh, you know, put some dummy data so I'll know actually when I'll get something from the database. Now what you've noticed I've done is I have for the data the product name and for the image i'm going to be storing the image 
in the folder and then I'm just going to store the name in the database. So that's why I just have the name in the image column with the extension of course. Okay, I just realized I forgot to include two columns to store colors. So I'm just going to quickly create that and impute some color hex code into it. One is going to be color for the view. One is going to be color for the text view. Now, when that is done, you would have to create a server side code that will connect the Android application to the server you have. So I'm going to be using ultra edits. You can use notepad or notepad plus whichever text editor that works for you. Now the first thing you need to do is to create a connection to the database that is stored on your server, which is what I'm doing here using uh, my SQLI. So I'm going to create a connection. Now when you're done, you need to save your files as a PHP file in the root folder of your website or anywhere you want it to be. And make sure that when you are connecting to the database, you get to point to that file. So since we aren't using a website now, we're using our WAMP. So I'm going to be storing this file in the folder I created that's, uh, that serves as the website. So when I'm done, I'll create a new file that fetches the data and I'll make sure I point to this connection file here. Now just create a file that will help us fetch the data from the server. Just choose any name you want. We'll make sure it's saved as a PHP file. And the first thing we're gonna do is to point, is to make a connection. So I'm gonna to point to the initial file I created using the include connect.php. Now, instead of just showing you how to fetch all the data from your table in your database all at once, I will show you how you could uh, implement uh, pagination that is fetching data in bits as you're scrolling through your app. So to do that, I will just set up the code here in this video. And then in my later videos, I'm going to show you how to do that in Android Studio when I switch over to Android Studio. But for now, since I'm just coding this, I'll just show you how to implement the pagination code or logic, whatever you want to call it. So I'll just set up a simple logic uh, whereby I could limit the data I get by sending a page or page number from the app. So in the first case scenario, I'll be sending uh, page one and then I'll fetch the number of data I feel should be shown in page one. So that's what we have if, uh, if there's something sent if there's a page sent, then I set the variable page to page. Now it's possible that it could be blank. If there's no page sent, that means it should just be in page one. So that's what I have there. So in SQL, there is a way, <coughs> sorry, to fetch your data in bits or in sections using limit and offset. So I would like to fetch a uh, four for rules that has at once so what i'll do is um i need to determine the number of rows i have the total number of rows i have in that table because uh, it's possible because it's possible i will have less than four four rows in that case uh page one will only have 
some things in it page two wouldn't return any result and then if it's more than four rows let's say five that means uh page there'll be something in page one and there will be something in page two meaning like just one result in page two so i'll just comment that so i'm going to get the total number of rows so that i can work with it so with the total number of rows i'm going to use that to determine uh, when the results soon be returned at a particular page number okay this is a p list now to do that i'm going to have a variable called page limit now this page limit will help me store the number i get when i divide the total number of rows divided by the number of results i want to fetch for each page now with that number with that variable i'm going to also round it up so in case i get a decimal number i just round it up to the upper limit so, I don't want, so if i have a one point something i round it up to two if i have two point something i round up to three because i know that uh, if i divide the number of rows total rows let's say five divide, divided by the number i always want to fetch which is four it's going to give me 1.5 and i'm sending my page in whole numbers so one point sorry 1.25 so 1.25 rounded up will give us two so that means i'll have two pages so in another case scenario let's say i got nine results in total in my table and i divide that by four what do i get i get 2.25 so if i round out 2.25 up it's going to give me three so that means i'm going to have three pages and uh, i think that way the logic keeps going on now if let's assume i have four just four things there four divided by four will give me of course one times i only have one page if i round up one two the nearest whole number is still gonna be one now the next variable which i'll create is the offset uh, variable i'll just call it start and this will let me know at what point of the table i should start counting my falls my number four from or my four uh, rows so i'm just going to do that with this simple calculation my start will be page minus one times limit then i'll go ahead and perform my sql query now just to go back to how the start is going to work now let's assume the page number that i'm requesting for is page number two so of course page number one already has four things so page number two should have the next four things so it's going to be two minus one which is one times four now it's going to start reading from row number five because it's going to take out the first four i start from five and ends in eight so that's why i have the offset is going to be uh equals to the start so run my query then which i'm after i'm going to just create an array convert that to json and push it to my application so i just go through my database using a while loop and fetch the results uh, put them in a json format merge it together and push it to the application or echo it so that my application can get it in json uh, format So to get the information to my application, I'm using JSON. So I'll do that by using the JSON encode that is bundled with PHP. So I'll have to echo the JSON to help me echo it in JSON to my application. 
So I'm just going to create an array of columns which I need to fetch things from or data from. So I have array push. When I have array push, I should have array because I'm, um, I'm pushing it at just a single uh, string of array. So I'm just going to have array. Then I'll have my array keys, which I forgot initially. I think I also forgot something else. But for now, I have my array keys and array value. Array keys are the ones in the uh, in, uh, inverted uh, commas or in the quotes. Yep, I forgot to add values to this. So please head back to your connect.php and make these changes depending on the name of the database and all. So I also need to push my view color and text view color too. So for the image, the way I'm going to do this is I'm not going to be storing the image directly on the database. I'm going to store the images in a folder in my web server I'll just store the name in the database so that uh, my database will not be bulky and it will be easier for me to work with so I'll just check if the names correspond to each other the glasses is wrong change that to glasses then I think I just make some changes to my colors so that will be all for everything that has to do with PHP and database section. So in the next part, I will show you how to make some changes to the video that I had in part two of this series. So we're going to be making the application to get its information from the server we just created in this part. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button and leave a comment if you need any help in one area or the other. So I'll see you guys in the next video.